come to encounters with Weston Forbes. <laughs> Yes. We've okay. been talking about this a long time and finally got you. It's finally happening. So I'm excited. I just wanted to. Uh, and, and, and I am your first. And you're the first. Okay. Yes. You're my first. Let's talk Hopefully first. not the last, though. No, but no, this is going to be amazing <laughs> because I gave you your first interview. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to be here with me the first time. How cool is this? Um. So realistically, it's one of those things where I felt like. It's just time for me to do it. I love talking. I love talking to people. I love getting people's stories. So I wanted to 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 talk and catch up. And it's been a while since I have seen you. My feet are been shaking o- over, under the table. Over to the studio. <laughs> My feet are Is this shaking. too formal for you? Man? I don't know. Like I'm just so I'm such a fan, you know, and I think that's what this this platform is gonna enable you to see how many fans you have you know i feel like djs are more of a friend but you really yeah. have fans like yeah i work all week i look forward to coming out you know stepping out in fayetteville and sitting down and having something to eat and um you're, you're just you're, you're the familiar friend yeah with the good music and i don't even know how i got here you see <laughs> I bet I know. I bet I know. There's you got a, like star comedians. That's like your director. Like yeah. you have a team. Good for you. It's all God. It is all God. Yes. And he's brought everything together. So I just feel like this is the next step in, in the in the direction that I want to go in that he wants me to go in. So um uh, yeah. So we're here. Yes. We're finally here. We've been talking about this for a while and uh and now we're here. So we got Thais Mills, I'm so excited. Uh, an abstract artist. Let me see if I can get your, your thing that you do in your own videos. An abstract artist from New Orleans, oh writer, painter, uh, philanthropist, uh, cousin cotton balls handler. <laughs> What else titles do you go by? <laughs> Introduce am, yourself to everybody. I am the president of the West Forbes fan club. I think that is the most important title. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. I am over it. You know, I handle all the postcard distribution. We meet up at the mall. <laughs> we sign. Rap. We have a mall? Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We meet up with our West Forbes shirts. Yeah. Yeah, and we go have coffee and talk about the DJ events. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my most treasured. Yeah, title. you might need to get a little closer to the mic so we oh, can hear you. But I'm sorry. But so we're starting a fan club. Is this the, is this it? This is no, the beginning of it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you need a fan club though. I'm an artist. My name's Tice Mills. I'm an abstract artist and writer from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I was the most published African American female columnist before Hurricane Katrina. Yeah, and um, I'm a dog advocate, literacy advocate. Uh, I. Uh, West Forbes advocate. Yeah. Yeah. You advocate for anyone who I needs advocate. an advocate. I advocate for the advocators. <laughs> okay. So you said that you were a um a writer before Katrina? Yes. Are you not writing anymore? Well, of course. Or... Yeah, you know, I think I think writing is one of the unspoken tasks of true content creation. You know, yeah. you, you see it and you you write it out, whether it be in your head, whether you use one of your AI helpers, whatever people use nowadays. Yeah. But yeah, writing, it all starts with the written word, I do believe. I should be wrong. No, 100%. We were just, uh, I hosted um, trivia last night, and we were talking about the Sumerians and how they started their writing and all that stuff. So writing has been around a long time, and realistically, it's one of those things where without it, how would we really be able to communicate to people that aren't in front of us, you know? So we're... we're um, where were you at in New Orleans? Like, where was your your location? So where did you live in, at? I lived in eastern New Orleans, which was about maybe about eight miles from the hardest hit area, um, the Ninth Ward. Okay. Yeah, eastern yeah. New Orleans. Were you there when the rain started and all I that? I was or? not. You know, you know, you know, Katrina happened during the weekend. The flood did not come until Tuesday. If people like, if you really go back, you know, it was when I think when Spike did, when Spike Lee did the documentary, it was about when the levees broke. So it's it's interesting how the flood, of course, is connected to Hurricane Katrina, but yeah. they were days away. Interesting. Like people were already kind of going back to work when. The, so after the hurricane. Absolutely, yeah. When the levees broke. Hmm. 
which was where the kind of like controversy was. Yeah. 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 I've mm-hmm. done I've done a couple of uh, documentaries on it. It's definitely. It's just like nine eleven. There's some unanswered questions it there is. for sure. It is. It's definitely some unanswered questions, and it's been almost twenty years. So you just have to yeah make your own assumptions and move on and get ready for the next one. Be ready. For- <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not an if, but a win. So after Katrina, your life was pretty much turned upside down, right? Because you had to move. On your it was. own, or yeah, or no, it was. Like your I house was destroyed. Oh or? yeah, yeah, no. Water sat in my house for about six weeks you know, until they drained. Dang, everything. And so I was almost like at, I guess you would call it. I mean, I was twenty five. What's the height of your career at twenty five? Right, yeah. you really don't know what you're doing then. But yeah, I was a media guest for Essence, which is that is still the largest African American entertainment. Uh, platform that came in so I was one of the media personalities that would come and you know pick up comedian Nate from the airport bring him to the hotel make sure he gets his crawfish and okay everything. and I mean my job was just to kind of go out and talk to just the most amazing people whether it was dinner with one of the saints talking to some of the most prolific comedians and authors and it was just amazing and then the storm happens you know and if you have to get up and move right now let's say you may have to go to i don't know dallas georgia or something you know you're not thinking that you're gonna have to secure another anthony's position when you get there get another trivia thing going you're just like okay i'm going to dallas i'll be right back yeah right and sometimes that's that was not the case i've been on tour yeah. Since Katrina. This is my third city. So you went from, from New Orleans to Dallas? No, no, no. I went from New Orleans to Houston. I evacuated to Houston. And then I was there three years, fell in love with my child's father. We built a home in Katy, Texas. Okay. We were there for nine years. And then when that uh, ended, I decided to just start another chapter again and come to Fayetteville and and you didn't have a clue what you were getting into coming here. I was like a little Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> just packed up my little baby. And we just we're went going. on ahead. Yeah. We just going. I had spent several summers here. Yeah. My mother's best friend, a.k.a. Uh, my aunt Shirley, um, was a pharmacist like my mom. They met and and at Xavier's um, in Xavier Pharmacy School, and she lived in Whitewater Creek Estates. So I'd spent several summers here and after my mom passed and I ended that relationship, I just wanted something new. I wanted something fresh. I really didn't have a choice as to come to Houston. You know, it was just a place I evacuated to. So when it came time for me to accept my role as a single mom and, and start building my business on my own, I just wanted to say that I chose that. Yeah. Yeah. And her father's from Texas. She'll always have a reason to go back and visit Texas. But yeah, yeah, I'm like a little gypsy. So what was the first thing that you started doing when you got here to Fayetteville with your business wise and all that? Uh, I really didn't think about my business when I first got here. My business has always been online. I bought my first dot com when I was 17. Okay. Um. And I interviewed Stevie Wonder when I was 15. I grew up next door to Sally Ann Roberts, who's Robin Roberts' sister from Good Morning America. So I've always been just kind of in the throes of media. But when I came here to Fayetteville, I was grieving the death of my mother. I was grieving the death of a 10-year relationship, a place that I called home for 10 years. And I and I had gained 80 pounds. I was like 400 pounds. I had a little bitty baby. I mean, it was just... It was just weird. And so I became a school bus driver. Here in Fayetteville? I was a school bus driver okay. for, for Fayette County for for about three years. And um, it was very rewarding. I was a school bus driver in Texas as well. Yeah. Um, it connected me with a lot of moms. Um, most of them wore my designs. I was the nice. only lady on a school bus here in Fayette with flowers in her hair. So <laughs> no one could miss me. <laughs> And it was a it was a very authentic way to massage uh, the the demographic of of where I live. Yeah. You know, it is. I picked up kids 
who parents voted for both sides. I picked up, I, I, I met all races. It was so unbiased. Yeah. And I wasn't a writer or an artist. I was a mom and I was a school bus driver. And yeah. I just moved here. So I met so many different moms and dads. And, and I think that's what I attribute my um extreme diverse palette here. My, my pal palette. Yeah. I have a lot of pals. And it's uh, one thing that I love about this town, too, is just the diversity. You never know where someone's from when you're talking to them. Oh, yeah. Because most people from that live here are not from here. Such it's implants. It's rare that you find someone who is born and raised here, but um, it's definitely very special. So you went on a weight loss journey here in Fayetteville? I did. I did. I lost 80 pounds before I got here, um, but really- And you said 400 pounds? Yes, I'm 185 now. A lot of people try to do the math. They're like, so wait, are you <laughs> 300 now? Are you two? No, I'm 185 now. I was 411 pounds, so I've lost over 200 pounds. I went to Tijuana and I had weight loss surgery. Okay. Okay. I lost about 80 pounds on my own, and I've just recently had skin removal surgery. So we oh, removed okay. about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm what you call snatch. Woo. Okay. <laughs> I never heard that word. Before. Oh, stop it, Wes. <laughs> stop it. I am not believing that. <laughs> snatch. Okay. So Tijuana, how was that experience? Was that a little, it sounds a little scary. I just had a friend that went through that too, and she lost a lot of weight. Too. Oh, yeah. So. I mean, you know, my mother's a pharmacist. I come from a medical background. My family business is CNA training, so I'm very astute with um, medical procedures. I think the marketing of the United States downgrades and downplays the medical advancements um, internationally because it makes us look good. Yeah. Right. So I paid about fifty five hundred for the procedure here. I mean, I'm sorry, in Tijuana, the cheapest I would have paid here is about eleven thousand in Alabama. But what you don't get in Tijuana are the things that are marketed here in. America, you get a dietitian, you get a psychiatrist you can talk to, you mm. know. We bundle a lot of things. Yeah. In America, but you really don't have to. And go to Tijuana they're like, "Okay, this is what you want." Yeah. We will give it to you. We want to get you. Yeah. All right. Come on back. Nothing talk to more, you. nothing less. Hey. <laughs> get a YouTube channel. <laughs> Figure it out. But I mean, in, in this economy, you got to get what you got to get. You know, my child's father took care of everything. I'm now a single mom and I'm a homeowner. So that yeah. was, I, I saved almost half. Yeah. And that's including your flight. That's including you getting there. You stay at this like five star, you know. It's a whole experience. Yeah. And you've, you've, you've heard some horrible stories, you know, of things that have happened to Kanye West mom, DC Flies, yeah. you know, beautiful wife, Jackie O. You're going to have some stories that are, are, are not favorable. But yeah. that happens here in the States too. Whenever you go under the knife, it's a risk. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I know that you have to be careful on what you eat and all that stuff afterwards. Yeah. Like I I know someone who passed away afterwards, but they had they were eating peanuts. It's like probably one of the top things that you're not supposed to eat after having that surgery is something like that. Right. So. Yeah, you gotta follow. I mean it's scary. Yeah. It, it it's still a very new procedure too. You really don't know. Yeah. That's I was invited to the Steve Harvey Foundation. I just spoke to them. It was my fourth time inviting me back where I talked about the disparities of African American women having this bariatric procedure. You know, it is very scary. My stomach went from the size of a football to a fist. Yeah. You know, we're now we're starting to see some of the 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 downfalls of BBLs now. You know, you you got to give things about twenty five to thirty years. Yeah, right. Yeah. Until you know, hmm. the medicine we're taking for COVID, we're not gonna know. Our kids may know. Did you or anyone else <laughs> take a pill for <laughs> for COVID? <laughs> you know, like we really Did you don't drink know. water at the base in Camp Lejeune. Did you wear the mask from Walmart in two thousand twenty one? It's like who who knows? You really don't know. Yeah. I know that I had to do it for me, and you know, I rather die trying, and you know, yeah, because it wasn't going to be good if yeah. you kept going that at that weight. Yeah, and I got to get a husband. And how you feeling? Good. And then now you're having you have your little tummy tuck and all that. It's okay. good. It, well, you know, it's a tool. Yeah. You know, if you're going through problems with your finances, you know, you hire a financial coach to help you save and invest. You know, if you're having problems trying to do your house, you get a designer. I was having problems with losing weight and really fundamentalizing the importance of eating correctly and balancing grief 
right? And let's just talk about it. Food, okay? I'm used to a different quality of food. You know, you come here to these new places, there's not a lot to eat, and then you got to eat stuff that you... Okay? So you're I'm saying a seafood the, baby. the food in New Orleans is is better or more options or Listen, what? Listen, you're not about to get... What? I know we had to talk about um, shrimp and grits. <laughs> That's what you should have had she, here. She called me one day. She said, I need you to find me some shrimp and grits. I did. <laughs> but I, not, but it's got to have some red sauce on it. So, Well, no. See, I, see, we don't do the red sauce in New Orleans. That's like a, that's a tourist thing. Oh, yeah. It's not the red sauce. Not yeah. the red sauce. I don't know what yeah. the tomato thing is going on yeah. there. You know, we, those are barbecue shrimp that we just do like Cajun butter and like just, oh, and then you just throw it on some grits. Like what, what, what is What's the red stuff? I so do you make, do you cook yourself? I mean, are you, you like to cook? I do. I do like to cook. I'm not as good as people would like to think that a girl yeah. from New Orleans should be. Right? So I'm <laughs> not going to play those games. But we're not going to starve. Yeah. We're not going to starve. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who knows? Your future husband could be watching this. Listen. So, you know, we're just trying to figure out. Are you? Out Where's the could... camera? <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. So you, you never know. You never know. I mean, I see you put your shouts out on Facebook. I thought you were talking to someone for a little bit. No Everybody like, okay, thinks I'm okay, talking okay. to someone. You know, You're not like me. You rush into things and just blast it out I there. I saw that. <laughs> we're not going to talk about oh that. Oh, my but... <laughs> God. That's a whole nother episode. I got to slow. I got to slow down. That's for but, sure. But you know what that means, though, Wes? It means that your heart is working. Yeah. And you're such a good man. Yeah. I'm searching. That's for and sure. And nobody wants to be alone. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care what you do for a living. I don't care how nice your house is. You walk inside and no one wants to be alone. Yeah. No one. And I think once you can resonate with that, you tap deeper into the vulnerability of how vulnerable you look when it's out there that you don't want to be alone. That's all it is. No one just wants to look silly. Yeah. But no one wants to be alone. Yeah. So you got to look silly. So you can let people know you don't want to be alone. (laughs) (laughs) Like, What are we doing? Well, I think... um... We don't have a problem being silly and, and having fun. That's one thing I love about you is every time we get together, we're always bringing each other up, just having a good time, just enjoying life, whatever it is, whether we're painting, uh, whether we're interviewing, whether yeah. we're just sitting there chilling with Cousin Cotton Ball, um, hanging out. But that's one thing that – and other people that I've met that know you too, um, just just around town, they all say the same thing. So – you're 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 like a bundle of light everywhere you go. You're trying to lift people up and be better and all that. And I think a lot of it boils down to we want that in return too, right? What we're putting out is what we realistically want in return. Yeah. We want people to build us up. We want people to be real with us. We want people, you know, when it when when we're slipping, we want people to come in love and be like, "Hey, tighten up," you know. That part. Um and- just like what we were talking about before. The cameras went on, you know, you're, you, 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 you always shoot it real. And that's something that the world <sighs> needs more of. And that's why I really wanted to do this. You know, it's, there's no script. There's no nothing. It's just two people having a conversation, and, you know, whatever comes up, comes up. So I appreciate what you bring to Fayetteville. Um, the gotta love Fayetteville Facebook page was your baby and still is your baby and all the things that have come out of that you know i see what you're doing um and it's exciting and everyone everyone loves you everyone either loves you or can't stand you oh my goodness wait a minute wait what somebody can't stand wait what who i don't know i'm just saying what does that even mean it might it might be uh i don't know what's the what's the what (laughs) <laughs> Who can't stand me? I don't know. I don't know. What, I haven't what, met them. Oh, but my goodness. The thought of it. People just either love you. It's like, it's either love or hate. Because they can't, they don't, they don't know how to take us kind of people. So. How do I, how do I, is this, I had to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I do go like. <laughs> um. So look at West, guys, look at West. tell people, tell people look where they West, can guys. find you at and kind of like, what's some projects that you're working on now? I don't know if you're able to talk about what you're doing later. You act like we're in the CIA but, or something. Well, I don't know. I don't know how branding and all that goes. Are you, you able are to talk, branding. Are you able are you? to talk about this? I can talk about okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So today kicks off my promotion with Hannah Brothers. Awesome. Congratulations. Brothers. Thank you very much. Can we, can we sh- shake my paw? Come on, man. Cousin Cottonball. There you go. There we go. There you go. Fix that. Fix that. 
Yes. Yes. Today starts my today starts my my promo with with Hannah Brothers at Take Off with Ty. I'm super excited. People will be able to go to gotalovefayetteville.com and nominate who they think is worthy and who they think needs to just kind of take off for a day and hang out with me. We're going to go eat at Hannah Brothers and you're going to get all kinds of like cool gifts to go out and have fun in Fayetteville. And it's a way for me to kind of honor Mardi Gras. Because every Mardi Gras, like, we take off, and it's like, like yeah. school is out, work yeah. is out, like, the buses don't run. Like, it's a holiday. It's a celebration, yeah. And to step outside of New Orleans, I told my girl, I was like, it's a culture shock, because I thought the whole world took off. Like, in my head. It's it's a New Orleans thing. So, it's really fun. I love studio brothers, Jim and Joe. They actually, um, they actually, they learned to cook. And did a lot of cooking in New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, and so they're they're excited. It's a it's a believe it or not, even though it's huge and it's in the middle of Trillet, it's a, it's a family run. Yeah. Feel. Yeah. And I'm just excited. That was one of the first places that I came here to to eat. Yeah. When I first got here to Fayetteville, Tony Bird was playing. She gives you a whole Natalie Cole feel, and I said, I want to do something. I want to. I want to do something in here. Yeah. And here we are. Like, and you have done stuff, right? Before, yes, right? Yes. They brought me in for Cinco de Mayo. I That's did, right. Yeah, yeah. I did the interactive Frida Caillou Garden. Um, and now we're doing this for the community. And so I am excited. I, I really am. It's a way for me to honor my city. Um, news stations in my city has brought me in to talk about it because it's a way for me to kind of just extend that hospitality energy that New Orleans is known for. Yeah. And... um it's a way for me to let people know, you know, no matter where I live, I'm still a gumbo girl. I'm still a New Orleans, Bayou, Creole, Cajun girl. Yeah. Yeah. You can take the girl out the Cajun, but not the Cajun out the girl. Yes. <laughs> take, the, <laughs> take the crawfish out the pot, but then the crawfish still needs to be ate. I don't know. So is, I don't know is there any place around, even in Atlanta, that you recommend? Maybe someone trying to get some authentic New Orleans food or anything? I'm going to say go to Hannah Brothers. <laughs> Yeah. Go to Hannah Brothers. They have an amazing seafood buffet on Fridays and Saturdays. And that's one of the reasons why I chose them. Because mm. the the food that they give is plentiful. I like the buffet style. Um, I like the food. I like what they do to source the food. And I like the size of the shrimp. I do. So it's a yeah. lot. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. You like these some real shrimp, right? Oh, I'm here with <laughs> Woo, we're here. We're here. We're alive. My hair is finally dry. It's it looks the end of the fine. Interview. You look fine. It's okay. okay. It's the end? Are you ready? I don't know. No, it's not the end. Else? No. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> so, Hannah Brothers. And then I'm such a fan. You're doing too. some I'm other so stuff, too. I want to give you a little time to talk about what you're, what you're doing with the schools and all the kids. Because mm-hmm. I feel like what am I doing? art isn't really Such appreciated as much as it, it used to be. When I was growing up in, in elementary school, we had art class. I don't know if they have art class anymore, but I see what you're doing with the kids, and I feel like it's so it's important for them to be creative and, and get the heck out of a video game or off a TV and actually use their hand and create something. So, so thank you for that, too, because I, I love working with the kids. You know, I... Growing up in New Orleans, that's what I'm saying. You know, I've been working alongside having fun with kids since I was like 14. I worked with the New Orleans Recreation Department um, where the kids were five and six and we would do the magnets, like the one that I mm-hmm. wanted to do for you. You know, Hurricane Katrina, as moms, filled out FEMA papers. I took all the kids down to the banquet halls and the hotels and we colored and went got pads from Holiday Inn. You know, I have brought art to where art has needed to be broken. Yeah. Did I just make up a word? I don't know. Bruneth. Bruneth. I bruneth. Bruneth. I bruneth it. Man, we're in the South. We can I do whatever we art. want. I don't think y'all is a real word either. Is oh, it? stop! Don't, don't tell anyone that uh, from the South. They won't believe. Is it? it? No, I don't know. Yonder. Is it? What? <laughs> <laughs> and we have way have too much wor- fun. Do they have any words in New Orleans? Like, you know what? what's 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 a cool word that you guys have that we don't use here, or you um, catch yourself using and and you don't really you like. People ask you, like, what do you New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. Uh, you could really, yeah. Like, we don't say, well, what well, I do, because I'm from there, and I know I don't live there anymore. So to 
to keep my 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 tourist friends happy, I do say New Orleans. Yeah. But just the whole word in itself, Nolans. Nolans. Baby. Yeah. You know, we put about about <laughs> six Y's in it. Hey, baby. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's um. I love it. But that's the beautiful thing, though. You know, like how we're here with you know your friend who's a comedian. Like you know, beautiful thing about New Orleans is finding these extra extraordinary ways to to just massage your level of artistry into mm. your fabric yeah. of your industry. You know, so whether it's a word, whether it's me making sure that I always talk about food, right? Because no matter where I go, and no matter what you got to say about people from New Orleans, when it's time for you to eat, y'all gonna find us. You're gonna eat. Okay. You're gonna eat so, good. You're right. So it's like taking the best of who you are and bringing it to people that don't even know you. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the best way to say hello Yeah. to me. Yeah, I I would love if we brought uh, maybe like a Mardi Gras celebration here oh, don't to Fayetteville. Get me going. That would be cool. That really would be cool. Like I want it on the square or whatever. We you should. Know? We should. And you know, now that we have more people coming, I think more people are going to be inclined to explore, expand, and expand on different ways to yeah. bring different ways to enjoy the world here. Yeah, that's what happens when you bring different people from different places. They want to be like. Where's my, you know, where's my little piece of where I'm from? Where's my yeah. little piece of where I'm from? And then that's great because then you get to enjoy different cultures and different food because we're going to eat Yeah. around here. Yeah. I can't believe you don't have anything for me to eat. No, I think it would be amazing. No, I didn't. I didn't bring you any You have so food. many different advertisers and like amazing I people. I thought like Anthony's is going to have a breakfast pizza here. Yeah. One we, of your awesome lawyer advertisers we'll is going <laughs> to. I didn't know what was going to happen. I came home. This is the first one, okay? We'll have to have you back. And, but uh, your and first a should not more, be. You, so. you, see what, you see what happens? Like me being your first? Just because I'm your first doesn't mean I have to be your worst. Are you the worst? No. No, I don't know. But you got to feed me. Yeah, we got. We're we'll talking about food. <laughs> it just feels wrong. <laughs> I mean, like I'm a real woman from New Orleans. Well, like, maybe Nate can go and get us some. No, uh, I'm not some... doing that to you, Nate. I'm not doing it. We should have had something set up. You are West. Yeah, I'm going to work are, on this. You're West Forest. So you're going to get ticked off then if some if the next podcast you see some. Oh, food. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> I'm going to storm this place because it, it's it's going to happen. The, yeah. the, the 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 West Cups are coming. Yeah. Right. You're going to have you know companies. Are we are getting some wanna... some Thais? cups something yeah do something because i am starving yeah. <laughs> jesus can you hear my stomach this segment Could have is brought, brought you to a biscuit you, or something you this know? segment is brought to you by my digestive system <laughs> <laughs> well you didn't well, you didn't have time to eat this it's morning okay. i guess i didn't I what time what time you wake up i don't i i really you I don't, don't wake sleep, up you're a so vampire <laughs> i don't i really don't it's, it's interesting i i have a store thaisflowers.com a lot of people think that the porch is real the porch isn't an actual real place people don't come to the porch it's really kind of like my gallery yeah. and so i paint between maybe 11 to 12 hours a day about five days a week to just kind of keep up with my inventory nice. online orders okay and um, I do corporate gifting. Yeah. So, like, of course, like anybody who comes here for an uh, interview, they can leave with a backpack full of goodies, a basket full of goodies. You know, I create content for amazing brands like you. I yeah. Consult people on how to bring more awesomeness to their awesome. So I'm always moving around, and I think within some of that, I'm a mom. I have a daughter. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to forget. But. Speaking of content, you recently were hired to do something for an African singer? Yes, Naomi Achu. Naomi Achu. She is, wow, she was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> she thought you were really cool, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> she did, she did. And, you know, she came on Saturday and I, she was supposed to come here on Friday, and we were, I was gonna bring her. Oh, to Oh, that would have been oh amazing! Oh my god! Like I, we, that was the thing. Yeah, we were gonna because you, we saw she wanted she, she loves, and that's how she chose me. She met online. Yeah, she loved my videos. Cool. She just loved that whole down home approach and how I bring my daughter and how I kind of find a way to put everything together. Yeah, and um, 
she wanted to visit some of the local places. And so I took her to Murray's in a Hurry. Okay. And she got there on that day. But if she would have got here on Fridays, we would have did some karaoke. Yeah, that yeah. would have been amazing. Right. But then she wanted to know, was her song in your catalog? So Ooh. she would have probably came up to you and asked you some questions. I would I would have got it right you away. You would have got it. it. You would have made it happen. <laughs> where, where, where do I find oh, this? Where but that's awesome. So yeah. where did she sing at or where, where did so she do I, her so thing So I do content creation shadowing. Okay. Okay. So let's say for your next guest, um, you just want, what, what does it look like? A day in the life of Wes, right? Gotcha. So she was doing the Hetty Awards. And the Hetty Awards is like the Oscars for Africa. Okay. I mean, and it's huge. I am African American. Did not know anything about it. Where's I, it at? It was a culture shock. It, it happened. It was at the Cobb Culture Center. Oh, okay. And it's been here in Atlanta about three years, but they've had it's sixteen years that they've done it. And I mean, the top players in uh, you know NBA, uh, NFL, uh, uh, acting. And yeah. If you are from Africa, and you have done anything um, of substantial excellence you are given a heady award wow yes and i was her plus one i shadowed her and she had all these amazing places to go to and i literally felt like i was on coming to america three <laughs> <laughs> only thing i was missing is the women throwing the the petals <laughs> in front of us because she's really like a like a real african princess like yeah and they treat her like that's that. what, that's what it seemed like yeah, and you, you know, did a great job capturing that. Too. I had to. I was very fangirled out, you know, and 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 so that's what my job is now. Following a lot of corporate people, I just did the director, the director, <laughs> the director of diversity for Domo, who's a subsidiary of, of uh, Facebook. She came down here to Morehouse for the Diamond Awards. I shadowed her. Nice. Um. Yeah, but if you didn't think about it, like you're Wes, you know, if you're doing something huge, you shouldn't have to touch your phone. Like, yeah, you should. Like, that's not your job. Yeah, so then you for just, that day. So then you just follow around and get the behind the scenes That's real look and all that. That's it. Yeah, and I love it. And you know what's funny is that in the past couple of years, I feel like that's become more prevalent because people want to see that. They don't want the perfect version. Hell of it. no. They want to see the funny stuff. They no, want to see. Yeah. They want to see the maybe not so pretty stuff that mm-hmm. you know they want real. And that's why I, that's why I figured I wanted to do this because I wanted just to have a conversation and be real. Cool. There ain't no script. There ain't no, you know, oh, cut, edit, tape that, you know. And his mics. And the mics. We got... So pretty. <laughs> I like big mics and I cannot lie. I like big <laughs> mics and I cannot lie. When I'm with West, I am fly. Woo, get it. Okay. Get it. Let's talk about your theme song because I've already, I've already started it. You started it, yeah. I like we're DJ gonna West to, and I cannot lie. It. It's a great angle. Yeah. It's like the mic is across my face with the lights. <laughs> We'll see how it is. Here for it. We'll see how it looks. On this the isn't God of Love Fay though. <laughs> okay. And, but you know, I'm gonna tell you something though. Just me going, me going live. Like okay, we're gonna say bye. Say bye to them now. Bye. Love y'all. So fake. This is really fancy. Um, all of that. We're just live with all of that. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't fake it. Me losing everything. Now I don't have baby pictures. You know, I, I talk about so much that I have, but we don't really get a chance to talk about what I what I what I've lost and what yeah. I'll never get again. Yeah. Um. And so, my life was alive, right? And so, I feel like if you saw me lose everything, candidly, then watch me gain it all back, candidly. So and we're gonna you... mess up, and we're gonna get it right, and we're gonna have some laughs and some drinks. Where's the wine? Where were you recording? I thought you were bringing the wine. Oh, I got it. Don't I'll get bring it. Me going. I'll bring it next don't time. Don't license me. I'm telling you. We can wait. Wait till the next time. We're gonna Nate, have a buffet. We're don't gonna get me going. I now I feel like I want to be here for the second one. Listen, you know how Dave Chappelle had the guy where he does the in the yeah. Nate may know. You just gonna be sitting like, in the background, right? I think now for every one of your interviews, I'm just gonna come like this and just take food from the cachuterie board and alcohol and just walk back out, like get my. My interview reparations. Okay, that's right. right. Yeah, I feel like I'm old. <laughs> Get Ti. I heard that's he's. Right. Good. I heard he's working on that too. So yeah, yeah. Shout out to Ti. <laughs> shout out to Ti. Screw you, Bank of London or whatever. Sh- <laughs> shout out to Ti though, because I painted a pink grill and I've been talking to his community engagement. We're gonna try to get it submitted to the Trap House. Cool. There's never been a New Orleans abstract artist to submit anything to. 
uh, to the trap house. Okay. Do they hang up? Like, they have a place for art and stuff, or what? So the trap house was just a house that Ti got. Okay. And he painted it pink. Okay. It's like a tourist attraction. Yeah. I painted a pink grill in my house, and I want to donate it to the trap house. Okay. You know, being uh, an African American female artist from New Orleans, it's so. It, it's like I'm constantly under under uh, unspoken pressure to just make sure people know that no matter where I live, I still love New Orleans. Yeah. I'm still an artist, you know, yeah. and I'm from New Orleans. No matter where I live, something happens to me from New Orleans. And so um, I've been brought in by a building company here, Divine Dream Homes, and I've painted three front doors. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to find a way to be in a home, but not on a wall. Yeah. So now I can kind of get paid in the sale of the home. Interesting. Because I've painted the front door and the breaker box. However you wanted to? Is it like abstract? Like your so backpack and stuff? So when, if they chose the home, if the house is getting built, they can choose the color. If not, the builder gets to choose the color. But it gets a little plaque on the inside of the wall that it was painted by a New Orleans artist. I, I signed the inside of the door. That is so cool. I know. And and they I found you or you found them? or I How, how can, did that encounter happen? So just going to show you why it's just good to be good to people. I yeah. kind of met them like how I met like your friend walking here. And yeah. I started doing social media um, for him. And I learned so much about the back end of real estate. And I did my first investment property in the historic part of Atlanta. And it was amazing to me. And I painted my home's front door. And when we sold it, the two doctors that bought it thought it was amazing. And they wanted to get a little plaque on it because it's going to be an Airbnb, whatever. And I was like, this would be a really cool. And then. That's awesome. Yeah. So you just kind of spoke that into existence. Listen. <laughs> I mean, did, you know. You, you did know, your thing. It's scary, though, as an artist, whether you're a comedian, whether you are a music artist, you still have to remember that we're artists. Yeah. And we can't get caught up in. um the wave of technology that we forget to realize that we're not just making jokes if we're a comedian, we're not just making music if we're a DJ or making art if we're an artist, we're making history. Mm. So how are people going to say, hey, do you know, you know, Nate, he was a comedian, you know, he asked pastors whatever he wanted to ask in his podcast. Do, you know, Wes, I mean, he did the thing with trivia, but you know, he had his, like, what are you, Yeah. what's going to make people stop? And just like remember who you are, because if Katrina didn't teach me anything, it doesn't matter how fly you are, you can be washed out. And so <laughs> oh, it's one deep. thing to be fly in your city, but if, how can you be fly to start over in somebody else's city? Because they yeah. got a DJ West in yeah. in Texas. Yeah, they got a funny comedian, probably with a podcast in Texas. They yeah. may not want you there. Yeah. And that was what a lot of people didn't talk about. After the fanfare is gone, you know, people can only pity you for so long, and then you become competition sometimes, yeah. right? Now, did you live in Atlanta? Is that where you said you had a house in Atlanta? No, no, my, no, oh, okay. my first investment. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay. Property. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I feel like Atlanta is filled with artists. It you know, is like. I don't like I know those are probably your people up there, but you might not be able to stick out as much as in Fayetteville where you stick out. Well, I hear that. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. I mean, Fayetteville is a cute little Bible Belt town. It's like a little old postcard. Yeah. You know, we're cute. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta is way more progressive. I mean, it's where Martin Luther King walked the church. Yeah. Right? So... But it seems like there's not a lot of people doing what we're doing, reaching out, networking, and all that stuff. It's, it seems like it's starting to grow. Like we're we're like at the base level of this thing in yeah. Fayetteville. Well, you know, are you you're from here. I'm from South Florida. I've been in Fayetteville for about four years now. Okay. So okay. So it's a, it's a lot of older people here in Fayetteville. Yeah, but it's slowly starting. Yeah. To oh change. my God, that's changing. It's it's yeah. Yeah, and, and people need to be entertained. Yeah. And they will find entertainment. Yeah. And and I think what people are paying for housing here in Fayetteville, I think it's a little bit disingenuous to get people to want to drive so far to hear a really good comedian. Yeah. And I was invited to Uptown Comedy. They invited me out. And the, the comedians, they were so nice. They had food for me there. It was alcohol. And I was just like, you guys really need to come to Fayetteville. 
Like, I'm a single mom. I want to be able to enjoy these drinks. I got to get on the road. I got to drive yeah. 30 minutes. I could have Ubered here. There's so many things you got to factor in. Yeah. Like, being from New Orleans, we deserve to step out and have a good time. You know, Drew Brees lives in the Garden District, but that's like a few steps from, like, the projects. Like, anybody can really kind of step out and go get a good show. Yeah. And come back home. It's so it's so foreign here, though. That's how West Palm Beach was, too, because everything was up 30 minutes. I mean, and, it, and it's a grid, right? So you could go five miles down the street and there's every kind of restaurant you want and movie theaters and all that stuff. And then another 10 minutes and you're in city place. So, yeah, I, I totally get that. And that's something that I feel like God has wanted me to do is to bring genuinely good entertainment to the city. And now that started with myself and it's branching out to others, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I definitely agree with that. And I feel like a lot of people don't want to drive to Atlanta. You know, it might be fine to drive up there. But when you're coming back, you know, it's not always not always the best. So you have your things that, you know, you got to do, you know, good football game. You know, yeah. you, you're going down, you know, but but no, no, we should be able to get a really good seafood dish here. Yeah. We should be able to see really good comedians here. Yeah. We should. It doesn't have to be all the time. Yeah. But but I really do think promoters owe it to themselves to learn the market, find out who the Wes's and the Thais's, the Nates and all these people are, get to know who they are. You can get 50 to 100 people to come out and give you about $20. Yeah. You can do it. Don't think you can't. Yeah. And do it here where you can stand out. Because you, you go to Atlanta, how much marketing dollars are you going to spend to get the people out? And then yeah. how appreciative are they going to be? Yeah. You do a good event here, they walk up to you. What do I tell you? Thank you. Yeah. Like, I'm five minutes away from home. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've had a drink. It's okay. Yeah. I can make it home. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not driving 30 minutes. You understand? Yeah. With my kid in the backseat. And, and we got pizza that we can eat in the morning. You yeah. know what I mean? From Anthony's. And it... <laughs> It fits. It fits my style. Yeah, it does. I love it. So, uh, what's cousin Cottonball been up to? You got anything with so him? So, cousin Cottonball is doing his own thing. He's being followed now by Pets on Q, which is one of the biggest pet agencies in LA, owned by two cool chicks. They have a show on Netflix. He helps me do content. Believe it or not. Yeah. He really does. Uh, you know, people will listen to a dog and a baby before they want to know anything. We got to go. Your voiceovers with him are hilarious. <laughs> I'll have to show Nate some of them because he will laugh. Cousin but Cottonball. your voiceovers are hilarious. Oh yeah, I mean, he's You did one where he was driving. Uh. <laughs> but no, that's what it's all about. It's just about having fun and spreading your word and your message. Oh yeah. And, all that. and here's the thing too. You know, being a writer. Creating press releases, going out to do big interviews, you know, seeing how people jump for bigger names than they do for brand new people like us or brand new businesses. I don't think it's fair. You know, I think if you have a small business and you have a few dollars to spend for marketing, I think we can bring a pet in to tell your story. You know, I don't think you need to have a few thousand dollars to make that happen. You may yeah. have a few thousand dollars. You know? Yeah, it's about being creative with what you have. It is. Yeah. And so even though it looks like a bit of an art gallery, I like that people say that I keep the art in marketing. Yeah. I do like that. Oh, that's nice. I, I never do. heard that one. I do. That's good. I mean, let's think about it, though. Most art artists were the first marketers. Hmm. Their homes were the first galleries. Before hmm. you got to a gallery, somebody had to see you in your house. Interesting. Yeah. You know, what Warhol did with those Campbell soup cans was genius. Tell right? me about that. Warhol? Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Warhol and, and how he commercialized art and just kind of took pop art and, you know, took screen printing and how he would layer the pictures of like Marilyn Monroe and change her color and then send it to her. And he did it for... You know, Diana Ross and Elizabeth Taylor and he kinda took the he kinda took the fascination of art and kinda dipped it into the the allure of celebrity. And so that like Andy Warhol made being an artist celebrity wise. So Christopher hmm. Studio fifty four came in and he was invited to Studio fifty four and it was just different in all races, you know, yeah. like Diane, Diana Ross wanted to be painted by him. Elizabeth Taylor wanted to be painted by him. Yeah. I mean, everybody just wanted a piece of him. And, and it all started with him taking soup cans 
Campbell soup cans and just painting them. And that's so cool. Oh yeah, well, I've never seen those before. I'll have to look them up. Oh, I bet those see. things are worth some money. You oh, <laughs> oh god, you have no idea. We we'll have to find you one of them cans. Listen, <laughs> when you look it up, we're gonna have a whole other conversation. You're gonna yeah. call me like, hey, I know you said it on this interview, but. Wait, this guy, wait, this is really on camera that I didn't know who Andy we, Warhol is? We need Yes, a, he did not know who Andy Warhol was. No, no, that's fine. That's what it's all about. That's what learning. it's all about. You're interviewing an artist. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell yeah. you what, though. I, I got something for you. Okay. So, in the black music world, mm -hmm. they have Skinny Luther and Fat Luther. I want to start something with you. Single West. And in love, West, because you are a different West when you're single, and you're a different West when you're like in love. Yeah, and it's everything that everybody is allured by. Well, like you really wear your heart on your sleeves. Like I look at your post to be like, who has his heart today? Yeah, where is she at? Yeah, who's Mrs. West? Well, I will tell you uh, right now, loving myself is where the focus is, and. Aww. And realizing, you know, what I have to offer and and what I have to uh, present to the to the person. Um, but at the end of the day, it's one of those things where you don't know unless you try. You don't know who someone is unless you talk to them and we give them a chance about that. and all that. Yeah. Um, but I have ADD, so my brain starts to rush oh, into things and, and all that us. stuff. I got some OCD too. I got a little D in me. Uh, you know, so it's one of those things where, uh, you know, I'm I've been on a journey, probably for about six years now, to find out what makes me tick, mm. what what turns me on, what turns me off, what makes me mad, what makes me happy, what's sad, all that stuff. So. Um, but like anything else, it's a journey and you, and you're on that journey too, well, because listen, you both, you, you want to find someone to sink your teeth into. I really do. I really do. But I'm going to tell you, I want you to dip and dip means date in private. I'm not, I'm yeah. like, we are not putting, yeah, no, uh, no Facebook blast no Facebook. and all that. Yeah. We need you to dip. Yeah. Dip, and that's the thing too, dip. is that growing up, I never, I was never in a position where I am now where people had their eyes on me and cared about me or anything that like weird? that. So now it's like, okay, well, I probably shouldn't do this because everyone's looking at me. And then, you know, the thing is, is that when things don't go as planned, then everyone wants to know your business. They're and looking all that. at you still. So they're like, what, what's going on? They're looking where's at you this still. and where's that? And who's this and that? So it's a learning curve for me. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm still here and, you know, I don't have no uh, no kids, and Ugh. I don't have any house. Disgusting. You know, I don't have to deal with anything like no, that. So. No, like, real adulting thing. Yeah, like, yeah, so. Uh, but me and you are single. Yeah. Me and you are single. We can still do single stuff in Fayetteville. Like, we yeah. represent a big, there is nothing for singles to do. I've talked to you about this before. Like, we need to start, like, if you're single in Fayetteville, you just, like, look down. Like, yeah. like everything is geared towards family and people with kids. Yeah. 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 Not even singles with kids. Everything is about being married and it's so unrealistic. Well, there's a lot of singles that come to karaoke. <laughs> Real? <laughs> yeah. You're blushing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe no, they're coming. A, there's a couple a uh, couple of them out there. Um, but no, I think that as as this city starts to grow and more things happen, like Trillith is amazing. It's a great place for it to go on a date night, you know. I don't know necessarily what what they have up their sleeve but there's a lot of construction going on over there so Trillith is gonna Trillith is gonna be huge um it's probably gonna be its own city eventually you know yeah um, they're but, never gonna be done but um but Fayetteville you know we have a lot of cool things that are that are popping up and um they just opened up that wine bar um behind Twisted Taco I don't know the name of it. Yes, but, it uh, is a but it's an art, revival. It's an is art it called, place too. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is black owned by okay. females. So he shout out to, cool. to to her, and it's it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that building wasn't really being used. I know it was like a it was like a uh, it was a museum. museum or it was something, a beautiful so. museum where you can find a lot of Gone with the Wind um, memorabilia and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I love it. 
Um, so anything else you want to shout out to the fan, to your fans I and people don't... that be watching, maybe your future ex-husband or future, future ex-husband, <laughs> sorry, future husband. <laughs> it's not scripted. It's real. It's real. So real. <laughs> First of all, we're not doing a prenup. No, we're not. No prenup. No prenup, honey. No. Um, I, I just thank you. Thank you for believing enough in yourself, for believing enough in me, and for your future guests, and uh, for this platform. Of giving people somewhere safe to to share their dreams, and yeah. I, and I love that you're not you're not curtailing it to to an industry or a gender or any of those types of things. Just being able to keep this seat open. Yeah and have an open mind and it's an honor to have been your first well i appreciate it and uh, i love people and i just wanted to uh to talk to interesting people that i love and get along with and just get their story just talk to them and you know podcasting is kind of the future so it uh, is. It's, it's something that i i enjoy myself listening to so um, thank you for being with us today. Uh, go and and check out Miss Thais on Gotta Love Fayetteville Facebook page, Gotta Love Fayetteville dot com. Please, Thais Flowers. Yes, and get yeah, Thais Flowers. Yep. I have uh, a pet collection, uh, pillows, home decor. I'm working with some of the top interior designers. I'm now a published author. Yeah. I have my very first coloring book, and I even took it a step further and. Um, created a whole set awesome yeah so you can get it sent cool. and signed with me perfect and or you can get it from amazon and it's mandalas for moms do you know what a mandala is mm -mm. a mandala is a um it's a structure inside of a coloring sheet so if you open up a coloring sheet and the entire sheet is not colored that is a mandala okay those yeah. are beautiful. Yeah. My dad called and was like, so what you doing with Nelson Mandela? <laughs> dad. Dad. We love you, Dad. No, Dad. <laughs> awesome. Thank so you, though, babe. I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you, you being with me and um, and popping the, popping the cherry. <laughs> it's our first one. What are we going to do with him? But more to come, and I appreciate you. We'll have you back on another one. Oh, this uh, is your gift. So. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You get a journal. Write down all the, anybody that comes. They should sign the journal. Oh, nice! You know, like I have a guest book or something. I have, I have a line of journals now. It's going into the gift stop, gift shops in Piedmont. So it's signed and it's scented with blue by Chanel. Ooh, okay. I signed my everything signed in colors. So Thank we're going to so do much. Red Door by Elizabeth Arden next month. Cool. Well, we'll we'll get everyone to sign that. And yeah. So you have to your sign. Notes. You have to sign that today. For I us, will, so. and I'm going to say hungry. Hungry. Bring food and wine. Right. He kept me here <laughs> under. He kept. He brought me to a basement with cameras. <laughs> he had me locked here for an hour, and he didn't feed me. Oh man. And I'm from New Orleans. I know. We're going to get you some. Thank uh, you. Some grits and. Some no, that's me over. talking to future advertisers, food people. Come, Come on. on. Yeah. Come on, advertisers. I love it. You're Come always. On. You're always. You're always thinking. So. I'm. I'm in my head. I'm your director of marketing. Yeah. Yeah, there's just no paperwork. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. It's coming. Awesome. I love you and I appreciate I you so you, much. Babe. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Take this care. Is great.